welcome to She's Crafted to Thrive, a show for women in photography and other creative businesses. You will hear conversations about the real everyday struggles of juggling life and business while trying to maintain passion and balance. As women, we have the skill of getting things done, but sometimes we get in our own way. It's here where you'll see that you're not alone. You'll discover that success does not mean perfection. Fear, negative thoughts, and challenges are all part of the journey. On the podcast, you'll find the inspiration and tools you need to have a life and business that thrives. On this episode of She's Crafted to Thrive, our guest is Tiara Mitchell, a family photographer who shares how learning to value yourself can increase your confidence in your business. I love this conversation with Tiara because we talk about all these sweet, amazing stories and all these golden nuggets that I think you'll love. So be sure that you listen all the way through because there are some great ideas on how to really stay authentic and provide value to your customers, especially in the family niche. All right. I'm super excited to have Tiara Mitchell on. She's Crafted to Thrive. She is an amazing photographer. She does beautiful images of women and their children and they're super cute I just love them and if you haven't read her blog you must read it um and I just I'm just super excited to have her on so Tiara please tell us a little bit about you hi so um I live in Oakland California I came here when I was a little girl and um I am a mom of two I've been married for five years to my best friend and he helps me run my business he's a big part of TMP Tierra Mitchell Photography, and I specialize in maternity and newborn images because I just, like you said, I just love the little babies <laughs> and bellies, and I can't help it. So I, I just, I wanted to specialize in maternity and newborn for that reason. That is awesome. Yeah, your images are gorgeous, girl. I, 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 they're beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> and they look like so relaxed and comfortable like I don't feel like they look like you know some you know some maternity pictures and baby pictures look a little awkward to me sometimes so mm-hmm. really enjoyed like how natural yours are it's interesting you say that because I do a lot of posing <laughs> <laughs> well, that means you're doing really good not everybody can pose in a natural way so that's amazing <laughs> so you know this podcast has always been about, and it's going to be about, the women and these businesses and what inspires them. So I always love to start off by asking, why did you pursue this path in life? What led you to your photography business? Okay, so it's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, since I was a little girl, I had a camera in my hand, and my mom had bought me this little toy pink camera. I still remember it was those wind up cameras and I would literally carry it everywhere. And she got sick and tired of having to go get the film developed because I would just have rolls of film. And even as a child, there was just something about capturing like joy in the moment. Like I would watch my little sister play with my cousins and stuff. And I would just want to get those genuine laughs and I love showing them to my aunts and my mom, you know, and look, look how happy everybody looked. And that just always stayed with me. And even as a teenager, you know, I got my first digital camera and I take it to school all the time. I had so many cameras stolen in high school because everyone knew I kept a camera on me. And so when I was pregnant with my first child, I decided, okay, my baby's coming and I really want to pursue this photography thing. At the time, I thought the only way to become a photographer was to work for someone else. So either, you know, a magazine or a newspaper or something. And I just happened to Google how to be a photographer. And all these blog posts on people starting photography businesses popped up. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I can start my own photography business. (laughs) And so... That was literally how it started, and it took some years of research and stuff. Um, I didn't actually launch my business until my baby was one and a half, and at first, I was just taking pictures, and it wasn't until I realized I regretted not taking my own maternity photos. I was very afraid of the camera when I was pregnant, and you know, um, do you have any kids, like you? I don't. I don't have kids. I have friends with kids. <laughs> okay, okay, so... 
when you're pregnant, your you know your body changes, not just your belly, but like you smell and all these other places you never think of. <laughs> right. You just you don't feel like yourself, and so because of that, I refused to get in front of the camera. Like I didn't even want people taking pictures of me in my baby shower. But gotcha. then looking at my baby when she was one. I was like, man, she's grown so much and I miss being pregnant. I really wish I would have taken those photos. Mm -hmm. And from there, it was a passion to show women, you know, your body is beautiful when you're pregnant. You might not think so, (laughs) you know, while you're pregnant, but one day you're going to look back and be like, man, that was amazing. And I wish I could kind of relive it. And so that was how I came to start a maternity newborn portraiture business. Because I wanted my portraits to not only focus on giving these moms beautiful images of themselves and their babies, but for them to understand and see for themselves how beautiful their bodies are and as a way to celebrate their bodies. Gotcha. That's how I got started. Wow. Yeah, and that is, that's pretty cool. You know, it's so interesting that you said that, you know, looking back. It's always that looking back that gets our minds. Yeah about things you know um like man I wish I had done this or I wish I did this more and I know what you mean um it's a feeling comfortable with like how you look mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want nobody else to see these pictures ever again. like I don't want nobody to be witness to this ever again <laughs> but um and then it's not that bad when you look back like I don't got the pictures now and I'm like what was I tripping on though I wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah it's like well and you're pregnant so it's like that's okay like that's even if you're not I think right I think it's just the world right now that we live in I mean especially for women we're constantly bombarded with what we should or shouldn't any stage of our life so capturing those moments when you aren't maybe feeling the most beautiful are probably the times when you are the most beautiful because you are so vulnerable and you're so vulnerable exactly yeah yeah. Well, I want to get I want to get in a little bit more about what what is it about photography that drew you from such a young age? I mean, I knew you were saying you like to capture the joy. Um, what? How does that translate to your business now? Like, how does that really connect with you now? Because you photography is the only way you can make time stand still. Mm. You know, and. It's so hard for me to find the words to describe it because I feel like it's just this magic that you can't get from anywhere else. Like, yeah, you can make home videos and stuff, but I think even in the videos you get so caught up in watching that you can't take the time to really sit there and look at this moment that happened and to take in all the emotions. Um, One of my favorite photos is from a hospital session I did for um, a client of mine who had a c-section and this baby was their last baby they were so hoping for a girl and they got this little boy (laughs) because they had two boys already and um but what made him when she saw his hair he had red hair and she chose the name Rowan because it meant little redhead little red-haired boy And she had no idea he'd come out with red hair. When she saw him with red hair, like the look on her face, she just, she, the whole time she was just staring and she was just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He came out so perfect. Oh. And you can see that in the way she was looking at him and just gently touching his hair. And people looking and not knowing that story may not be able to get those emotions from first glance right but as a mom myself I know that every time she looks at that she's gonna relive those exact emotions exactly yeah. and that was why even as a child that was what I was trying to capture I wanted people to be able to look back at this precious moment in time whatever it may have been and be able to just relive those exact emotions and get all the feels from it all over again. You know, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. Exactly. No, I know what you mean. That's so true. You look back at pictures. I look at look back at things all the time and my husband and we're just like, you remember that time? You just literally, it's almost like if you were watching a video, you've replayed it and now you're in it again. Like it, it brings back all of those emotions and those feelings. 
it sh- it really is a gift to capture those moments for sure. So, um, how would you describe your business? I know it's so funny because you were talking about <laughs> starting and thinking you were going to work for someone, but then um, just you know googling and like, oh, I can start my own business. <laughs> what? Which is funny to me because I don't think I ever thought anybody would think that way because I guess for myself personally, I have always been kind of like, I don't want to work for nobody. <laughs> like that's just, <laughs> um, it's interesting that that's your, your, your story where it's like, yeah, I wanted to do photography. I wanted to do, and I, I thought that meant I needed to work for someone. When you looked at Google, were you like, oh my gosh, I got to do this by myself? Were you feeling overwhelmed? Were you like, what were your emotions when you realized, oh, I could do this by myself or I could work for someone? At first, I was just excited. Um, I didn't want to work for anybody. I really didn't. Um, but I wanted to be a photographer, so I didn't care if I had to work for someone to be a photographer because I just gotcha. wanted to do it that bad. So when I realized I could start my own business, I was like, perfect, here we go. <laughs> then getting into the whole business setup and stuff, it didn't get overwhelming until most photographers reach this point where no longer be shoot and burn because right now you know yeah and that's when I panicked because I was like oh my god I have to raise my prices what am I gonna tell my clients when I raise my prices and and girl like I did a you know you do your Excel sheet where you list out your expenses and everything and the time and all that and when I saw those numbers my heart dropped because I was like I can't tell people that I'm gonna charge them this much. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's where, like, I feel like I started to find myself in photography because you have to see your value first, right? Or are you expect anybody else to see that value? Yes. And so when I tell you my husband had to put me in the mirror and make me stare at myself, I'm getting emotional. Oh, <laughs> And tell me, you know, I'm a great photographer. I give a great gift to my clients and they love me for it. My session fee starts at two fifty, and everything is sold separately. And I broke down the first time because I was just like, I cannot charge people two fifty plus additional products. Like they just want their pictures. Mm. And so it was tough. And looking back again, looking back, it's interesting to see how when I didn't value myself, my business wasn't wasn't moving at all. You know, I wasn't getting inquiries, barely getting any bookings and trying to do free this, free that. And so learning about valuing myself and being confident in who I am and really, that's why I love your, your podcast, um, being crafted to thrive. Yeah. You know, because we each have a gift. And although, and I think because we spend so much time in our own gift, we forget how special it could be to someone else, you know, who doesn't get to experience that daily. So in growing my business, I did have to step back and really think about who Tierra was and what Tierra had to offer these moms who were trusting her with these precious moments because you can't redo a newborn shoot because that baby will never be that little again. <laughs> right. You know, it, but it, it was such an amazing process just to realize that I had a gift to give and that this gift was priceless to a lot of people. So they didn't care how much they had to pay for it. As long as I gave them the best of me, they were happy to. Wow. That is such a powerful statement. I think, I mean, that's part of the reason why I love doing this. <laughs> I love doing yeah. it because of this because I feel like the women that are doing well in any creative business have had that moment where they've had to have the like the real hardcore come to Jesus moment if you will (laughs) um like who am I what am I doing am I do I believe in me because especially in photography I feel like you have to believe in your art it is an art I think that's a hard thing too for some photographers to feel like it's an art and not like this professional I mean it is professional but like not like this thing you go to school and you learn da 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 there's a reason why there's different styles and different um angles that people take and why different people like your photography well don't like your photography mm-hmm. it's an art and it all starts with how you craft you, like how you craft your life, like how you craft who you want to be to your clients and who you want to come off in your life. Like, who are you? 
And I think it's beautiful that your husband, my husband is too, is like, you know, hey, you are amazing and you are great. And I'm not just telling you that other people have told you that, you know, we have to see outside of ourselves. And I think it's beautiful that you have a cheerleader that's doing that for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, TMP wouldn't exist without him. <laughs> that's awesome. That is so awesome. Um, I, uh, my husband and I have been married 10 years in September. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And we are always, we're always looking back and just cracking up about things. And it's so funny how we kind of bounce off of each other. He, he's a tech guy. He's like in the tech world. And um, I'm always telling him, no, you think you know, every, you think everybody knows what you're saying, but they don't. And I think in photography, we think, oh, everybody can just take a picture. <laughs> everybody can take a picture but not everyone can take a picture the way that you take a picture or that you capture that moment and the way that you edit it and the way that you pose it and the way that you put the props you put everything together not, and not everyone's going to do it the way that you do because there is only one you and I think we take that for granted I think we take it for granted yeah so what do you what do your clients know you for like you know what are they most like if they were say were to say like Tierra Mitchell is, what would you think they would say? <laughs> no. <laughs> so my clients, my clients know me for my bubbly personality. Um, I truly feel like there's no way you can get great photos if the whole time we're just stuck up and <laughs> strict, you know, session. So I like to get to know my clients and then. It's more of being friends because honestly, the way my style is set up is I would like to see you unfold in front of my camera. And so in the beginning, you know, it's usually awkward, especially if it's our first time meeting because my camera's gigantic and there's a big camera in your face and you can feel the awkwardness. But then like, I always make sure I keep from behind my camera and talk to them, you know, like there's a story behind this person and that story has to translate to the photos, but it's not going to translate if I don't connect with my client. Right. So I do feel like my clients know that they have a friend in me. Um, usually we end up talking after the shoot, you know, we get together for coffee or we have, they have kids. Most of them have kids and we get the kids together from time to time. So my clients know I'm very family oriented and I, I like to serve with love. I love that. I think that's a good good place to serve from. <laughs> yeah. It's a good place. So how do you keep your business? Like, you know, do you get a lot of referrals? Do you do a lot of word of mouth? Do you do like um, sessions where um, you do um, where they different um, periods? Like after, do you just do the maternity sessions and then the, do like family portraits? Or are you really just stick in, the, in these two? genres so i i do i don't just stick to the genres um ideally in a perfect world you know <laughs> in business you have your marketing avatar right in a perfect world i would meet my client when she's engaged because i love capturing wedding. i love capturing love honest and so at every wedding i get all choked up and then i'm a mess editing the pictures <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm like, oh, it was such an oh, and then this time. And what <laughs> so, but really, I say I like to capture her engagement because then not only do I get to work her wedding, but more importantly, after marriage comes baby most times. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to be there for. And I think it would be amazing if when, by the time I get to do her maternity portraits, we've already done engagement, wedding, maybe another boudoir shoot or something for an anniversary you know that created the baby pretty much <laughs> <laughs> um so then by the time she's pregnant we get to like live this moment together right because i offer baby plans so where i capture your maternity and then the first year of baby's life so we're gonna be seeing each other for a long time right while, you know and having that connection is, it just makes it even more fun because then you know I feel like the moms trust me more with their baby. Uh -huh. And then they're a lot more relaxed. And when moms relax, babies relax. 
Yeah. Everything just goes real smooth from there. And then, you know, babies grow up, which means <laughs> family sessions. And and I love family sessions because of that, because I get to see my clients again and again. And, you know, we talk about, remember when they were a baby and they would make that face? <laughs> They'll make that face. Right. And being able to be a part of their family, you know? Yeah. So I definitely, I, I'm very happy to give my clients what they need. Gotcha. And if that means I have to do a family portrait for an extended family, then I'm there to do it because like, they're like my family. And I'm right. For them. Yeah, I think too, especially in this niche, that's, I mean, I think in any photography business, because unless you're doing like real estate photography, I mean, it's a relationship that mm-hmm. you can over time, especially when it's something so intimate, like a wedding and then returning session like they're so intimate like you have to be really <laughs> comfortable with the person who's shooting you yeah from them so you have to really build an authentic relationship with your clients um so how do you how do you stay connected like that i know i i i coach a lot of different photographers and i think this is the piece that they just i don't know why it's so funny to me that they have a hard time connecting to you outside of being behind the camera so they might be you know in the in the moment of taking the pictures and everything they can connect but once that moment is done it's almost like I don't know what happens <laughs> like I still try to understand each person is different but something happens where they disconnect from the actual staying in contact with these wonderful people beyond that that session so is there anything specific that you do to stay connected to your clients past, you know, future, you know, is there a way that you could stay connected with them? Honestly, I follow them back on Instagram. That's like the best way I know how to do it because everyone's on Instagram. Most of my clients are on Instagram. That's how they find me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I, you know, I comment on their photos when I see the babies and stuff and even if I don't see them for a session for a while, we talk. Yeah. And so by the time I do see them, it's like we're playing catch up. And right. you know, when you see an old friend, it's kind of you pick up where you left off. And I feel like that's that's how I stay connected. Now, I don't, not all my clients are on Instagram or even Facebook. So I've been working on an email list. But I don't want this email list to be like, hey, I haven't seen you for a while. Come to the session. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't do that, please. <laughs> so it's taken me some time because I really want it to be designed to to connect with them. Like more, mm-hmm. hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on? This is what's happening in our life. Um, especially because I'm a mom of two. And so I'm realizing that a lot of the times I'm in a position where I can give my clients mom advice. Right. Know? And I love that because we have something we could relate on and I'm no longer Tierra the photographer, but Tierra the mommy friend and we get to vent and talk about how our kids are driving us crazy. <laughs> yeah. You exactly. know? And and I think that's what I want my email list to be. That's even where I'm trying to I would like to take my blog, just more of the ins and outs of being a mom, of being a single dad like I've met some single dads and they're like hey we get forgotten about a lot because everybody talks about the single mom no one talks about the single dad so I feel like I could even improve on how I connect with my clients outside of photography but that is where I'm trying to take me gotcha Um, I do want to be more of the the mommy friend when we're we're not working on portraits well I think it's great that you stay like connected to them like on Instagram and then you take moments to kind of chat with them and things like that, because I think that really keeps that connection real and, you know, authentic. Honestly, I think that really means a more long longevity of a business. Like it just keeps your business going and um, keeps you going. Like for me, I just love the people are always cracking up at me because they're like, girl, you just called to ask me how I'm doing. Are you just texting? Me? Yeah. Because if I start talking to you about business all the time, you gonna get annoyed. <laughs> right. Right, because <laughs> you don't want to hear about like you know they paid for what they needed. Right. I know me as a consumer, I get irritated when people are in my inbox trying to tell me stuff all the time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
So you mentioned, and I know because you are a mom of two, how do you balance your life and your business? Like, I know balance is different for everyone. Like everybody feel, might feel like there's, we talked about this in a previous um, podcast about not, balance is not a blanket. Like everybody knows what, once you've achieved this, then everybody's balance, everyone's balance is different. So have you found ways to balance your life and your business? The biggest way... So to answer the question, first of all, I don't think I've quite found balance. Okay. <laughs> I'm still, the second baby, so with the first baby, I worked and, you know, she went to daycare and things. And second baby, I stayed home with both the kids. And I thought it would be, you know, like on TV where the stay at home mom is just <laughs> kids, you know, play and we do coloring and stuff. It's not like that at all. <laughs> um, so I had to first learn to give myself grace. And realize that the day isn't always going to go as I planned, especially staying home with an 18 month old and a four year old. Yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and you, you know, some days things aren't going to get done. And I had to learn how to ask for forgiveness rather than ask for permission. I, th- I think Jasmine says that. Jasmine Starr. Yeah. And, um, and I, I picked that up from watching another one of her videos because it's so true, you know, like I'm not perfect and I'm only human and I'm going to make mistakes. And I used to let those mistakes cripple me. Um, I would be kind of ashamed to talk to my clients about, I'm sorry, I dropped the ball with this. And then I realized when I just was transparent about, Hey, you know, I know I'm a little bit behind on this deadline. My apologies. Here's how I can make it up to you. They're like, Oh, no worries, Tierra. Take your time. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's not that big of a deal and the world isn't going to end right and the second part I think that's really big for me is finding my support hmm. and I'm extremely blessed because my mom and my sister live next door to us oh girl that's awesome right and I, I truly don't understand how single mom single parents do it my mom was a single mom and I have so much more respect for her Because I'm married, my husband's a great father, I have the support next door, and I still feel like I'm losing my mind sometimes. (laughs) So, um, and there are times when they're not available, so I had to learn how, you know, to call on my village. And it's amazing how if you can just ask for help, people show up. Mm. I think sometimes, especially as solopreneurs, because our, you know, our vision's our baby, and, um... We want, huh. our, we want our business to be the the way we picture it. So it's kind of scary to hand things over to people. But when you can, you know, release it and trust that everything will work out, I feel like it's a lot less stressful and it's easier to find the balance because you prioritize better. And right. you have to make yourself a priority because you can't take care of others if you're not taking care of yourself. Yes, I I believe that so so very much. I think um, growing up, I used to see people doing the opposite where they would take care of lots of like take care of people and neglect themselves, and then later on in life, you know, they're dealing with that, and it's like, oh, I need to take care of myself, and it's so much harder to take care of anybody else because you need to focus on you for a moment, you know, for a moment. But it's the balance of taking care of you because if you're broken down and you're emotionally drained and you're sick, you can't help anybody. <laughs> so it's a really good thing that you have the support and you recognize that it's okay to be help. I think that's such a big part of small business owners and when it, and in particular women. I don't know why we kind of have this thing where we're like, we can do it all. And we are superhuman. We can do a lot. Like, no joke. We can do a lot. But that doesn't mean we need to do it all. It doesn't mean we have to do it all. It means we can delegate. It means we can say right. we can say no. We can say yes. We can say I'm sorry right now. I don't have time, but I can do it later. We can use those words and make those decisions so that we can take care of ourselves in order so that we can have a more balanced life with our family, our friends, our you know our work, our our businesses. So. It is good that you recognize that that's an important piece of living. (laughs) Right. Setting boundaries. Yes. Boundaries for sure. 
Yes, definitely need boundaries. Um, so what is the best advice that you've been given, whether it's as a mom or in your business? I know it's hard. And I've asked a couple other ladies this and they're like, that's a big question. That's a, I don't know if I have one, but if you pick one, what would it be? I have my one. Oh, you <laughs> <yay. laughs> It's funny. It's very photography related, but I was able to apply it to the rest of my life. And that's why I love it. Okay. Awesome. So, um, when I first started, um, when I decided I wanted to specialize in maternity and newborn, I went to a workshop with a photographer by the name of Anna Brandt. She's a very big maternity and newborn photographer. She is. I love her. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, I asked her, she, she took some one-on-one time with me and I'm so excited because she took this one-on-one time with me and I already knew the question I was going to ask. And I was like, Anna, how do you see light? And, you know, I'm ready for this big, profound answer. And she says, Tierra, you just got to keep shooting. And in time, you'll see light. And I wanted to be like, Anna, you can't cheat me out of this answer. <laughs> That's not what, that doesn't help. I need to know. And I had to sit with that for like a year. And, you know, and so eventually I just started seeing light. You know, I can look in a room now and I, it's almost as if light glares at me and it's real easy for me. And that's the best advice I was given because that's how you have to live your life. You know, you're not going to learn to see the light, to see the, the greatness, to be able to appreciate all the things that is, that are in life without just allowing yourself to live it and enjoy it and take it in day by day. Everything is a process and we each have to go through our process. And if you try to rush that process, that's often when you end up falling on your face, you know, you're trying to crawl before you walk and walk before you run. And so whenever I feel myself overwhelmed, I literally think of that moment and tell myself, Tierra, I'm just learning the light in this situation. Wow. Wow, that is beautiful and yes. Wow, that's great advice. Great advice. I could kind of totally see your face even though I can't see your face right now. Her saying that and you're looking at her like, really? Really? I was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is true that that if you just keep going and you know, it's really hard to see the positive things in life and you know, but if you keep looking for them or you keep going if you keep going, I think that's persevere, yes. Don't, don't give, give up. up. Yeah. Don't give up. don't give up. You can you can go far. You know what? You can go far. It's the reason why, um what do they say? Like just in general business, like most people fit it in the first like year and that's because one they probably didn't pivot and they just stopped looking like they just gave up and after the third year usually most businesses succeed like it's just that initial three years and it's kind of the same thing with life in a way it's like you know the first couple of years might feel really tough or the that struggle you're going for it might in that moment seem like impossible to end like it's never going to end, but if you just keep going, it's going to get better. Just like if you're shooting, your image is going to get better because you're going to be more experienced. You're going to see the light. I just love that advice. It's just beautiful. Yes, I hope it helps with you too. I think I think the audience will love it. <laughs> I think they will love it. Um, so, are there any tools and tricks that have helped you in your business or in your like? mommy life okay um first i think the biggest help i've gotten recently was i found a mentor and i did i was lucky enough to where someone reached out to me early in my photography career he was looking for a second shooter um and so he mentored me on the technical aspects of photography very well mm -hmm. but i found a business mentor actually through a nonprofit, so i didn't have to pay for anything or anything like that and she has been such a big help to my, not just my business, but she reminds me of balance so often. And I don't think I would have been able to figure some of the things out that I have without her. And I feel like everyone 
needs a coach, a mentor to just kind of guide them through those rough times. Um, and then I would say like more of a technical help would be automation. Mm. Yeah. I started, <laughs> <laughs> I started using 17 hats and I like 17 hats. I might <laughs> a little, just for some little technical things. I like to have control over stuff, but being able to have something where, you know, as a photographer, you have to send your quotes, your invoices, contracts, um, basic stuff that every single person asks for. And for a long time, I was typing everything out individually and even trying to copy and paste. And that took a long time. So with 17 Hats, the templates are made. My email template systems are all down. In some cases, when it works, it actually sends them without me having to be there to send them. And okay. That has freed up so much time and also taken off a lot of, you know, stress for me of having to worry about, oh, did I, did I send that email? Did that contract go through? Did they get, you know, did they get what they need? And um, uh, sticking with automation, using things like Planoly for my Instagram feed, um, being able to just sit down and plan out what my social media feed is going to look like because it's so hard to show up every single day with a new idea. <laughs> yeah. You know? So definitely automation and, and mentorship. You know, we're constantly learning and I think it's just great to remember that you never know everything. Mm. This is so true. Those are great tips. Yeah, I like seventeen hats. Um I've been getting into Dub Sato. Okay. Eight, um I think they they have a lot of awesome templates for photographers too, so that's one to check out. And I'm just going to have to email that one to me. Yeah, I'll have to email it to you. And um, Planoly, I know everybody laughs at me when I talk about Planoly, but me and Planoly have like a love-hate relationship. I <laughs> I don't know if it's me. <laughs> it's probably my brain. But And I started using later before I even knew about Planoly. So my brain is like on the later, it's an Instagram like plan, like planner slash auto post whatever mm-hmm. love it but everybody loves planoly so i was trying to discover whether or not i should do planoly and i'm just like that's not for me but i think a lot of people love planoly so it's definitely one i think everyone should check out yeah and i would definitely say like as an advice to when you're finding your tools don't be afraid to try something that you might like better you know right um i don't I'm not thrilled over Planoly, but I've tried other apps and I just keep coming back to Planoly. So I'll, I'll probably stick with Planoly. Right. But, um, you know, it's, it's okay to experiment. Exactly. It's okay to experiment. <laughs> now, everything works for everyone. Our brains are all different in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> uh, well, it has been a pleasure talking with you and hearing all of your stories and your amazing um experiences and tell us how we can find you online um yeah tell us how we can find you so my husband likes to say google me (laughs) but anything you look for me is always tiara mitchell um t-e-a-i-r-r-a mitchell and you can find me on twitter instagram and facebook i hang out there quite often Awesome. All right, ladies, thank you for listening, and I hope this conversation inspired you. Be sure to subscribe and tell a friend. That's it on this episode. And yes, you are crafted to thrive.